great thing about the Staineses is they ask really smart questions. I just had lunch with Harrison uh, and Heather. And uh, Harrison, he's famous for his index cards. Harrison starts the lunch. I didn't even have my Diet Coke yet. Harrison says, I have five questions. originally got started uh, back uh, in uh, 1986 with the I Have a Dream program. We brought the I Have a Dream program to Chicago. It had started in New York, and this is where you adopt a whole class of kids and then do your darndest to get them through college. And we adopted a group from the sixth grade of the Schneider School, uh, where most of the kids came out of the Lathrop Homes as a public housing project on the north side and then helped get a number of other I Have a Dream programs get started. We were literally had just graduated college, and I think he knew we wanted to do the I Have a Dream program right away, but he didn't tell us that. He would start giving us articles to read, and oh, lo and behold, it would be about Gene Lang and the terrific work he was doing in New York with his I Have a Dream program, and maybe you guys want to go visit him. How would that be? And he wouldn't even go. So the three of us took a trip to New York City, met Gene Lang, and you know fell in love with the concept and brought it back to Chicago. And so yeah, he would say that we made the decision and it was all completely his doing and he manipulated us incredibly well, but it was easy because we all liked the idea. Our dad has a very strong sense of purpose and mission and you know the real sense of stewardship number one and what we have really we're stewards for for the next generation and on and um, a sense of real work ethic. My father uh, was the only son of a minister and uh, was always gave sacrificially and during his father's ministry there was the first time they said for every dollar we spend on ourselves we're going to spend a dollar on the mission beyond the church. So we, I was brought up in that kind of a milieu and then having a family foundation is a wonderful thing and we ended up with three core values out of many. And, uh, starting with a work ethic that each of us expected to work as hard as we can and give as much of ourselves as we can. You know the, the second was a social conscience that if you're fortunate enough to have a good education and have some of the advantages in life you have a responsibility to share that with other people and third was stewardship. How do you, uh, as an individual and as a family, preserve what you inherited and then hopefully pass it on in an enhanced fashion to the next generation? So right now in Chicago Public High Schools, you typically have one counselor for every 300, 350 kids. That doesn't begin to meet the need. You have to start the minute they walk in the door. North London, historically, the number of adults with college degrees is, is south of 7%. It's 4, 5, 6, 7%. And so the number of families that sort of, you know, have had that experience and are, and are, are maybe exposing their kids to that or expecting that is just different than you might find. Um, and so you really have to more deliberately and more in, intentionally sort of say to kids, look, this is something you should consider and let's, let's show this to you. And here's what, here's what you'd really need to do in order to get yourself ready and how can we help? You know, you worked like heck to get them through the grade school and the graduation, but then they disappeared into this whole morass of the uh, public high schools across the city, and therefore it would be helpful if we could come together and have a high school, okay, and a community support entity that would really uh, back these kids on a longer term basis. I think a lot of schools, when the bell rings, they want the kids out of the building, right? Uh, Ours is the opposite problem. Kids want to stay. And uh, we have over 70% of our kids participating in extracurricular activities, whether it's homework club or sports or drama. So uh, our attendance rate so far this year has been 95%. 3% of your kids are sick on any one day. It's a joyful place. Schools ought to be places where adults know kids deeply. You know, that's been one of, I think, the things that's been consistent throughout our work as a family together is, you know, we started with the Ivy Dream Project, um, which really was around working with kids holistically, whatever their needs are, sort of helping them yeah. with them. And so that philosophy continues on in our work in North Lawndale. If, if you don't have people who've already gone through college, for example, in your home, uh, it's a more intimidating experience. It's North Lawndale College Prep. So we have full-time staff whose job it is to follow the kids post high school graduation through college and into employment. 
So you just can't say you're college prep and not have the numbers to show it. So I first met Harrison and Lois and uh, these uh, fabulous daughters back in 1988. Robin is on our board of directors. Robin has been on our board of directors from the very founding of the school. And I think one of the blessings that I count is having been able to get to know people in North Lawndale and spend time there and feel like that is every bit as much a community um, as, as other places in the city that I spend time. We're all connected. I mean, we all, we all rise and fall as a group and it is the right thing to do, but more to the point, it's energizing and meaningful to find ways to take whatever talents you've got and put them to, to good use beyond yourself. And then what's really nice, if you look at the board and the faculty, a number of those kids that have gone to North Lawndale College have come back to the North Lawndale community to continue to be involved and, and, and give back as adults and serve as role models. Some serve on the board of the school. Again, they hired one of their own alums as a teacher not, not uh, just a couple of years ago. Anyway, it's, that's what you want to see. One of the first things I learned about Harrison, it so happened that the mother of one of his uh, dreamers, that's what they called him, dreamers, she passed away. And uh, she was in the apartment for two days. And when Harrison and the family finds out about it, they go to the apartment, they get a social worker to help. Harrison and his family really support these two kids, make sure that they don't end up in uh, DCFS. And in my view, it's how you act when no one is looking really says what the measure of your heart and soul is. I'm sure I just sound like a crazy proud, um, biased daughter, but he's larger than life to me. I think he's larger than life generally, and it's because he has a level of warmth and compassion and humanity about him that is matched only by his intellect. And that is a powerful, that is a powerful combination. It draws people to him and it has made him always think about bigger and better and how do I help more. And it's, um, I hope to be half the person he is someday when I fully grow up. It's true, it's true, you're my, you're my hero. They really put their hearts in their heads where they put their money. And we wouldn't be the high performing school we are today were it not for uh, the intelligence and heart of Harrison and Lois and the daughters in the Staines Family Fund.